Hi friends, my name is Emily and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Irma Voth by Miriam Taves. So this is the book that my patrons voted on in the month of July. So one of the patron perks at the third tier is that you can vote on my TBR. If you are new to my channel, you maybe don't know, but Miriam Taves is one of my favorite Canadian authors. I have read her works many times and she has written things including A Complicated Kind I read this back in the day before I started using sticky notes and just wrote directly into the text Swing Low A Life, All My Puny Sorrows, and more recently Women Talking. I would say that Irma Voth is more similar to Women Talking than any of her other works that I have read thus far in that it doesn't explore more of her personal traumas, I guess. Miriam Taves father died by suicide and not long after that her sister died by suicide. These works really explore Canadian Mennonite dynamics and family traumas. These two specifically explore her family traumas in fiction. Women Talking is set in a Mennonite colony in South America where women are being raped by men who are drugging them with pesticides. And it's totally unrelated to her family in any way. So Irma Voth is the story of Irma Voth, who is a young Canadian Mennonite who is uprooted suddenly by her father and taken to Mexico. The shift is very sudden. She doesn't really have a say in it. Her mother doesn't really have a say in it either. They are just suddenly transplanted from fairly modern Canadian life to Mexico. The specific reason for this move is that it is more isolating. There is a mystery in the family around the eldest sister who has died, and there's that hole, I guess, in the family left by the sister, and a lot of silences around her death that happened before that abrupt move to Mexico. So there is family trauma there, but not in the same way that it's explored in Tave's other works. So Irma falls in love with a Mexican boy and they elope, and the response to this from her family for marrying a non-Mennonite is that she is disowned from the family. So she is not allowed to interact with her mother or her sister or her siblings. She is allowed to live in a house on a property that her father owns. He's like, you can live here for free, but you have to work my land, milk my cows, etc. That is the deal for you having a place to live. A film crew comes into town, and so it's a Mexican film crew that is telling a story about a relationship between two Mennonites. The director has cast a Russian Mennonite and a local Mexican Mennonite, and so there is a lot of opportunities for profound misunderstandings. So the Mexican director speaks Spanish and English, but not uh, Low German. The local speaks Low German and Spanish, but I don't think English all that well. The Russian Mennonite speaks Low German, but not Spanish, so she can't communicate with the director. There's just so much potential for miscommunication, and so Irma is hired on as a translator because she speaks English, Spanish, and Low German. And the story sort of goes on from there, exploring family dynamics, exploring relationships, exploring silences and traumas. And I think the most interesting part of this book for me is the ways in which Irma deliberately mistranslates the director's words. So the script is written in Spanish. I don't think they're really using the script anymore either at most points. The director is just telling Miriam, or Miriam, the director is just telling Irma what to translate. On page 63, Diego told me to tell Marike that when Alfredo told her what a good mother she was in the scene, that she would tell him that he was a good father too and that when Alfredo commented on her soap-making abilities that she acknowledged him gratefully with something appropriate. So then she goes over to Marike and tells her, so now in this shot, I said, when Alfredo tells you you're a good mother, you smile softly like this and look at him and say thank you, but how would you know? And when Alfredo tells you that you make good soap or whatever his line is, you nod and say yes, but you're sick of making soap and thinking of just buying it from the store from now on. And again, I said, try not to look directly at the camera. Marike nodded and got up. Thanks, Irma, she said. No sweat, 
I said. The original dialogue is about a husband being like, wife, you make good soap, and her going, why, thank you, this is a wonderful compliment. But in translation, we get Irma's spin on this conversation, being like, wife, you make good soap, and her going, thanks, but you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about because you never do this domestic labor. I could make the shittiest soap in the world, and you would never know because you've never done this before. Irma, in her translation, is acknowledging the ways in which Mennonite women are kept down in the community by performing traditional women's work, right? Like, if you spend all day like, this is something that was explored in Women Talking as well, that the women don't know how to read or write because they don't have the time to go to school to do this. They are kept down within the community. They have very little mobility, even if they want to leave the community. There are just so many things that you take for granted when you know how to read or write, and I feel like Irma, in that translation of the script, is really getting at the core of the sexism and the deliberate down trodening that's not a word the deliberate uh stifling of the potential of mennonite women and so i thought that was really great and every time it happened i enjoyed it also the humor in this book is just so dry there were so many moments where i laughed out loud it is dark humor typical of miriam taves there are so many dark moments where irma will just state something and like it's just so blunt and so truthful with no filter that it's you have to laugh at it. I really, really loved this work. I think still, if I have to rank these, Swing Low Life is my favorite, followed by Women Talking. It's a very close call between All My Puny Sorrows and Irma Voth. I have read All My Puny Sorrows more. I think I've read it four or five times, but it is, it's a lot less funny of a read than Irma Voth. The two books are doing different things. The two works are doing different things. And I think my least favorite is actually Complicated Kindness. Um, I have read this twice, once for a book club, once in school. And maybe I just need to read it again now, having read more of her works. But I, it doesn't feel as like fleshed out and well-rounded as some of these other books. If you are looking to get into Miriam Taves, I would definitely recommend checking out her works. Um, I think that if you are interested in family dynamics, if you are interested in like messy relationships, if you are interested in stories that deal with trauma and you are prepared to read a story about trauma, her works are beautifully written and darkly funny. I would recommend Irma Voth. Irma Voth is probably an okay place to start if you don't want to start anywhere else. Like if you're interested specifically in this story, I would say it is a good place to start. It's indicative of her writing and the types of themes that Taves explores. And overall, probably one of my favorite reads from the month of July. Those are my thoughts on Irma Voth by Miriam Taves. Let me know your thoughts on Irma Voth in the comments down below if you have read it. Before we go, we have to thank my patrons. Thank you patrons for making videos like this and long form content possible. I really appreciate the work that you enable me to do. If you are interested in becoming a patron, having access to perks like the Red Rum Book Club, which is a Stephen King book club that I will be hosting when I hit the goal of 50 patrons. Uh, it will involve live shows and a community to read Stephen King books together. If you have been debating picking him up for a while, this might be the time to do so because there will be a community to read with and to discuss with. The links to the Patreon page where you can become a patron and participate in the book club will be on the screen right now. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!